Ne mach's. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Ren and today I am a wizard. Obviously there is a next part in the Halloween series. Here is a Hogwarts student inspired robe and necktie and I also have DIY wands included in this video so that is super exciting. There is also a giveaway again at the end of this video so stay tuned for that if you would like to check it out. Obviously I am a Slytherin student because Slytherin is my house and I have so much house pride. But you can obviously customize this to whatever your house is or Gryffindor for like Harry, Ron, or Hermione, those characters. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The wand I'm starting off with the plain dowel rod that you can get at any craft store or any hardware store and it's cut to the size of like an average wand. If you don't want to use a dowel rod, you could easily use like the end of a paintbrush or a chopstick even. For this tutorial, I'm just basing it off of Draco Malfoy's wand just for a reference image. So the key to customizing any of these wands is to use hot glue, and you can manipulate this hot glue into any way you want to make your own wand. And the amazing thing about the hot glue is that once you paint over it, you can't even tell. It looks like it's part of the wand itself. And you can also use like bigger pieces of clay, shape it the way you want. And then I am just taking some brown paint and painting the top. The paint is also very, very customizable, and you can make some really cool designs. And of course, I am painting the bottom black. And then I am just taking a little bit up into the brown and then just smudging it with my fingers so it blends a little bit better. And then that is the wand, and if you want to cover it with Mod Podge or like a clear sealant, then go for it. That'll make it look nicer and more durable. Moving on to the tie, I am taking a tie I bought at the thrift store for only 50 cents and using it as a base for this DIY. So basically you just want to lay it down on a long piece of fabric, cut around it, leaving about half an inch on all sides. Once you have all of it cut out, you just want to take ribbon and don't be like me and actually use one that matches the, <laughs> matches the matte or shininess of your fabric. You just want to place two thicker strands diagonally right next to each other and then a little bit farther away you just want to place a thinner strand. I just cut the piece of ribbon in half. You can either glue on the pieces of ribbon like I'm doing here or sew them on. Personally I like the glue better because I feel like it, it's easier to set its shape. And you can of course go back over it with the needle and thread or a sewing machine just to have everything be more secure if you'd like. But I feel like the fabric glue does a good job. Once that is all done, I'm flipping it onto the back and placing the tie on top of it. I'm going to keep the tie as the base so it's not flimsy and actually holds its shape. I'm just gluing the piece of fabric that we made on top of the tie. I'm using hot glue in this tutorial, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you use fabric glue and not hot glue. Or you could sew it because the hot glue gets really bunchy and stiff and it does not look nice, so don't use hot glue. <laughs> and then just to finish it off, I am measuring another strand with the green fabric that we started with and measuring the length of the tie. And then I am just gluing it onto the back with more fabric glue just so it's all finished off. And I'm just taking push pins and placing them along the edge so it holds its shape while the glue is drying. And then you're just going to want to tie the tie and place it over a white button down t-shirt and there you go. And finally the Hogwarts cape. So you basically just want to start out a piece of fabric folded down the middle. I use three yards of fabric and, and depending on where you get the fabric from, fabric can be very pricey. If there's a surplus store in your area, I highly recommend checking that out and seeing if they have fabric. I got this I got three yards of fabric at a surplus store in my area for only $5, which is crazy because it's really nice fabric. <laughs> so I am just taking my three yards of fabric, laying it all out, and then folding it down the middle, and that's what I'm starting with. 
Then you're just gonna wanna lay down on top of the fabric and spread your arms out. And then measure around your arms, but leave a lot of space in between. And then you're just gonna wanna cut, cut out what you just measured. So it looks kinda like a snow angel. Kinda. And then right here, following the green lines, you're either going to want to fabric glue the layers of fabric together where the lines are, or sew them. And then you're just going to want to hem all the raw edges. If you don't know what hemming is, you just take one layer of your fabric and flip it about half an inch on top of itself and then sew that down just on the same layer. Sew or glue right where the pink line is just so there's no raw edges on your fabric. And then you're going, you're going to want to do this on both layers of your cape. And you're going to want to cut right down the middle on only one layer of the fabric. It is very, very essential <laughs> that you only do one layer and leave the back completely solid. Then you're just going to want to hem the lines I have shown here. For the hood, cut out a shape like I have here. I didn't measure it at all, I just kind of eyeballed it. But it ended up fitting me, so it was okay. <laughs> you just want to make sure it's big enough because you can always make things smaller, but you cannot make it bigger once you cut it. Then you're just going to want to hem the pink line on both layers of fabric and then sew or glue both layers of fabric together along the green line. Once you have all of that done, you're just going to want to lay the hood with the right sides of the fabric down together at the top of the cape right down the middle and pin the hood right to the edge of the fabric. Sew or glue right where you have pinned. And then you're just going to want to take the edges of the sleeve and sew right up to where the hood starts and then stop. I'm just placing this on my dress form so you can see what I'm doing. You you're going to want to measure this on your own body, just so it fits you properly. So this is what you're going to have so far. You're just going to want to cut the fabric in the shape I have shown and then hem it so the edges are not raw like I said before. This is what you're going to have left once you do those two steps. And it looks pretty nice, pretty finished. And then you're going to want to take clasps or buttons or velcro or anything that you can find at your local craft store for really cheap, they're like $2 maybe. This is what you're going to have for the cape. And if you wanted to give it that one more Hogwarts flair, you can print out your house or whatever house you're making the cape for their house crest onto transfer paper, or you can buy an embroidered house crest off of eBay or Amazon or wherever you buy those. <laughs> I'm just using transfer paper. So I'm just cutting it out, peeling off the back and then ironing it on in the spot that I would like. And that is the finished cape. It's long and it's bouncy and it's super fun. And if you screw up because it's so big, you really won't be able to tell that much. <laughs> Alrighty, so if you would like to win a tie just like this, but in your house or whatever house you would like, and also a wand, all you have to do is like this video, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, and come at your Hogwarts house. I will be picking the winners next Sunday. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I really, really, really hope you enjoyed this video. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay hydrated, and I will see you all next week.